Hi everyone, it's John here, T4 Family. I get a lot of questions asked about um, lowering T4s. Um, as you can see, we've had quite a little drop here. So I'm just going to do a very short video uh, to give you the overview of how you can lower your Volkswagen T4 yourself. It's quite straightforward, you just need a few basic tools. And uh, let's just go through there, the front and the back. Here we go. Okay, so here we are. Um, the great thing about the, the T4 suspension is it's very straightforward, it's very simple, there's not a lot to it. The front wheels, they are held together on torsion bars, so there's no springs in the front. Um, the torsion bar allows the, the wheel to go up and down, uh, also sets the ride height. The good thing about torsion bars is you can just get underneath, you can loosen off a nut and then you can instantly drop the front. Very straightforward as long as your bolts aren't seized. On the back things are a little bit more complicated but again still very straightforward. Behind this wheel we've got a trailing arm that swings up and down and that regulates the up and down movement of the back wheel. There is a shock absorber to absorb the bumps and there is a spring that sets the ride height. So what you're going to do on the back is you're going to jack this up, take the old spring out, replace it with a slightly shorter spring, put it all back together, lower it back down, and then your ride height should be a little bit lower, like ours is here. Okay, to uh, lower the front suspension, you're not going to need very much. You're going to need two axle stands. Axle stands are really important. Safety first. I'll show you where they go in a moment. You're going to need a hydraulic trolley jack and then you're going to either need an adjustable spanner like this one here or better option a 27 millimeter um, wrench here so this spanner you can pick these up they're only a few quid on e um, ebay or on amazon i'll put a link into the description um, but it's a lot easier if you've got a spanner uh, because this is going to stay the right size and it's a little bit longer as well you can get a little bit more action on it and you're going to need that because in a minute you're going to see it's not an easy job but it is quite straightforward okay first thing we're going to do we're going to get the the front jacked up we're going to need both sides jacked up and on axle stands and then leave the wheels dangling so let's just do that and i'll be right back Okay, so we're all done. Let's have a little look under here. As you can see, I've used the axle stands to prop up the car or the van on the subframe. It is absolutely essential you use axle stands because when you're adjusting the torsion bars in a moment, if you're just on a, a trolley jack and you slip and uh, the torsion bar comes loose there's a very real danger that the van's going to drop on you so safety first make sure that you've got axle stands in place and then we can work safely under the vehicle let's go around to the side have a look find these torsion bars okay starting from the side of the van the easiest way to find these torsion bars just come straight down in line with the fuel tank underneath Got the fuel tank here and then just behind it you've got your first torsion bar here and then you've got your other torsion bar on the other side there now the thing to one thing to realize is that the torsion bar that's on the left of the vehicle affects the ride height for the right hand tire and the right hand torsion bar affects the ride height for the left hand 
tire. So they're opposite. It's it's not it's not obvious. But what we're going to do is we're going to get our spanner. This is the nut that we need to adjust. Now, obviously, our van's already lowered. So what you'll find is that that your bars are going to be a lot higher. They're going to be up here somewhere. This thread that's sticking through is going to be a lot longer. So let's just grab a spanner and show you how this bit works. Okay, I'm going in with the uh, the 27 millimeter ring spanner. What we need to do here is get on that, and you should find it will move. It will be incredibly tight. If your van has not been lowered before, what I recommend is getting under here a few days before, get a wire brush onto all of this surface rust, brush all of the surface rust off you can, get a lot of penetrating oil spray, so WD-40 or some kind of other um, loosening spray to get in on, on these nuts. Before you start, what you need to do is you need to get a tape measure and you need to measure how much thread is sticking out on the bottom of the nut. As I said, yours is going to be quite a lot longer. It's probably going to be somewhere between 65 and maybe 75 millimetres. What you need to realise is that for every 10 millimetres that you drop this nut down, you're going to be dropping the van about 20 to 25 millimetres. So if you start here and it's say eight centimeters 80 millimeters and you want a, a 50 millimeter drop take it from eight centimeters down to six centimeters and then have a little look see what that looks like now i know that on our van we have gone down quite a long way and this is about 35 millimeters so if you want the same sort of look as as what we've got get down to around sort of between 35 and 40 millimeters see what it looks like you can always wind it back up one thing I will say to be really, really careful of is when you are undoing these, you're going to be putting a lot of twisting force on this torsion bar. So as this undoes, up here, the other end of this, this torsion bar is, it's not attached to the van, it's on a knuckle. And if you find that when you are twisting the bolt, the, the bar is twisting with it, whatever you do, just stop. Um, because what could happen is that this bar up here comes out of its housing and the whole thing's going to drop on you and that is going to be a very uh, awkward thing to put right so if you find that when you're twisting the bolt at the bottom you're also twisting the torsion bar just stop you're going to need more WD-40 you're going to need to rub back that rust uh, and then try again in the worst case scenario um, and you can't get these bars out you can buy um, torsion bars and um, nuts secondhand from breakers yards or you might even be able to get them direct from Volkswagen if you need to cut through this bar you can use an angle grinder but just be incredibly careful because this is your fuel tank so sparks and fuel don't mix very well but also cutting discs are going to cut straight through this this plastic um, fuel tank so be extra extra careful if you do decide that you need to cut these torsion bars off. Okay, we've loosened off the wheel nuts now. What we're gonna do is jack the van up. Now it's really important that you are safe when you're doing this. You've got to make sure that you're jacking in the right places and you absolutely must use axle stands. So let's have a quick look. I've got a trolley jack. Um, I do find that a trolley jack is really gonna help you you're going to get extra reach the the bottle jack or the jack that comes to do the tires no good at all now underneath what you're looking for uh i i jack here on the uh on the trailing arm mount and the reason for this this is solid if you look at other places up here you don't want to be jacking on this because this is this is not structural um if you put your jack up through here you're going to make a nice little hole um bit further back you have got these chassis rails you can jack on the chassis rails but what you'll find is that um, you won't be able to lift the van high enough off the ground um, to get the uh, axle stands underneath so what we're going to do is we're going to use um, this point here okay so the van's up now We've got our axle stands we want to get them nice and tall if we can 
Now, same rules apply underneath now. You don't want to be putting your axle stands on the sides here because as soon as you um, lower the van down, it's just going to push a nice big dent through the corner of your sliding door. So make sure that your axle stands are well positioned underneath the chassis rails and then ever so carefully let the jack back down. Then as it's coming down, just make sure that the axle stand is directly underneath the chassis rail. And there we go, that's all set down now. Right, time to get the wheel off. Okay, so we've got the wheel off now. Um, let's have a little look what we've got. So, on the back here, uh, disc brakes on, on this model. Um, we have got the damper unit, which is attached at the bottom here. And then underneath, I'll show you that in a moment. Just be aware that I've already lowered this one, so it's gonna look a little bit different if you haven't already done that. Um, the thing that's gonna, that you need to swap out though, it's, it's this spring in here. So on a standard T4, you're gonna have a big coiled uh, spring here. It's gonna be a lot wider. Uh, it might even look a little bit longer. So this is a replacement uh, Faulkner spring. Uh, this one is a six inch, but you can get them in lots of different lengths and different spring rates. We've also got at the bottom here, I've got a five millimeter Powerflex bush. And at the top there, I don't know if you can make it out, but there's another one at the top here. So it's a six inch spring and then five mil uh, plates on the bottom and the top. The the Powerflex bushes, they just stop it from rattling and also uh, from squeaking, uh, give it a little bit of extra damping. Um, now let's have a, a quick look. I'll show you which bits you're gonna need to take apart. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna need to do to, to free up your spring is you're gonna need to let off uh, the damper. So there's one of two ways that you can do this, um, but probably the easiest way of doing it is from underneath so if you have a little look underneath here um, actually <laughs> you can't see okay so if you're starting out fresh um, you won't have this uh, this strap in place either what this strap is for is uh, when you switch out to using Faulkner springs because they are much shorter you need to make sure that the trailing arm is held in place um, so that the spring doesn't drop out so if this strap wasn't here um, what would happen is the trailing arm would drop down and then the spring inside will will come loose and, and you could in theory um, pull that out uh, that is an MOT failure so um, just be aware if you do swap for these Faulkner springs and you want to get through the MOT still you are going to need to strap them up. Um, the straps connect to the exhaust hanger mount and then go down. Uh, if you look from the back it's quite important that you strap it in behind this um, brake pipe uh, otherwise if you went over this you, you would end up crushing that brake pipe and then um, you're gonna have no brakes. It then goes underneath and then at the bottom of this this um, shock absorber you can't see it but there's uh, there's another bolt it bolts into the the trailing arm um, and then what it will do is it will bolt through the the strapping here and then the strapping folds back over itself. What you're gonna need uh, to get on the bottom of that I think it's a 17 or an 18 mil spanner, might even be a 19. Best thing to do, grab a set of spanners and just work on it. Uh, the other thing you might want to do when undoing this, this bolt at the bottom is get yourself some uh, water pump pliers or, or an adjustable spanner or something and just grab onto uh, the end of the, the shock absorber here just to stop it from rotating. Once you've undone this bit, uh, at the bottom, the whole trailing arm will swing down and at that point you'll be able to take your old spring out, put your new spring in and then just put it all back together again. By the time you get it all back together, get the wheel on, get it back on the deck, um, that's going to see your drop. It's, it's very straightforward on, 
on the back. There's no messing around with um, having to fit springs over shock absorbers like you would on some other cars. Um, so let's get this wheel back on the floor and um, show you what it looks like at the end. Okay, we're all back on the deck now, but before I go, I just want to show you one more thing to be aware of. Okay, so we've come in from behind the back of the wheel here. What I want to show you is um, where the trailing arm the front. So up in here, there is a, a rubber bush. And originally there'll be quite a, a, a good amount of gap in here. Um, and then you have this, this rubber bush here, it, it acts as a bump stop. What you need to be aware of is that when you lower your van down, you're going to be getting incredibly close to this, this bump stop. If it gets to the point where your trailing arm is touching your bump stop, you have now have no suspension travel. So what that's going to mean is this bar is going to try and go upwards, you're going to hit a bump and it's just going to bounce straight back off the bump stop. That could be an MOT failure, you do need to be aware of uh, because it, you haven't got enough travel here. So there's a couple of things you can do. You can take this bump stop out and you can cut it down or you can replace it with a power flex um, version which is much much thinner. Okay that's pretty much it for this very very short guide. Uh, it's not a complete guide to lowering your T4. Obviously, do a little bit more research. If you have any questions, drop them in the comments. Send me a message directly on Instagram at t4.family. Find us on Twitter. Uh, I will answer any questions that, that you have. But one thing I would say is if you're not confident to do this yourself, definitely look at getting someone with mechanical knowledge to do it. Take it to your local garage or find someone in your local uh, transporter club or forum. Uh, more than happy to help. But that's it for now. If this video was useful for you, please drop us a comment, give it a like, subscribe to the channel, uh, hit the bell notify, and then you'll get a notification every time we post a new video. I'm going to be doing a few more of these quick uh, technical videos uh, while we're on lockdown. We can't go out and about, so any questions, anything you want to see, give us a shout and we'll do what we can.